Hello everyone, on behalf of PR Newswire, 8 Northumberland and Marie Claire, a uh, really warm welcome. This room we're now in is the grandest uh, living example of a Victorian ballroom uh, still in existence today. As the epitome of glamour and sophistication, I think it's a totally appropriate setting for our very special guest speakers, Trish Halpin and Justine Southall from Marie Claire. Well, hello everyone. Um, it's lovely to see you all. Um, thank you so much for coming. Marie Claire, the ultimate glossy brand. Um, in terms of the overview, uh, what I'm going to do is give you some background. So, we reach 2.2 million women every month. That's our combined reach. So, we are the largest fashion brand um, in terms of women's magazine brands in the UK. And our mission has always been to inspire our audience. That, that's what we do. Um, our strap line is think smart and look amazing. And that is what we really strive to do um, in every issue and across all the platforms that we have. Um, we are a very big brand, as I've said, and whether it's through our award-winning journalism or our glamorous fashion shoots um, or our how-to videos for creating hot hairstyles or our beauty genius app, um, daily updates on our hottest news stories via our website or delivering behind-the-scenes exclusives in our new biannual fashion magazine, Marie Claire Runway, we put our readers at the heart of everything we do. Um, and so, just in terms of what that means in terms of the spread, um, we are 25 years old this year, so we are much more than just a magazine. In fact, we're 16 platforms. Our brand footprint extends really into all the areas of our readers' lives and to our fans of the brand, really, so they can engage with us as and when and where they want to. Who is the Marie Claire reader then? Who's the audience? Who, who are we talking to? Well, we did um, a big piece of research last year um, and we looked at an audience of women and defined a group within that audience that we called the new type A. So she's a successful career woman. She's quite often the chief income earner. Um, she's a very high achiever. She has um, great ambitions for herself in her career um, and also in her life. That core demographic is broadly 25 to 38 ABC1 working women. But our positioning and relationship her is, is really about her outlook and her attitude and her aspirations. Um, and we had that ongoing conversation with her about her life um, in everything that we do. We are the biggest magazine in the fashion monthly set um, by some way. Um, our latest ABC was 255,000, um, which was up 1.7% year on year. Um, and I think that, you know, that, that we talked about the reach in the introduction. We have the largest um, reach in that space, 868,000 in terms of the readership reach. Um, and 35% of our audience are AB, so we have a, a high... Um, level of affluence and education within our readership. 69% um, um, are ABC1, 28 to 38. So you can see really where that kind of demographic is sitting at, at the heart of the brand. Um, and crucially, um, I think in, a, in an era where there's so much duplication between media, 240,000 of our readers only read Marie Claire, they don't read anything else. Um, so I think that's a very, very powerful kind of um, symbol really of the loyalty of the brand. From the website point of view, we are the biggest women's website with, in fact, now 1.4 million unique users. We've seen huge growth over the last year. We've had 45% growth in our traffic overall, 42% in our unique users. And on the mobile site, which we were the first um, to optimize our site for mobile that we launched. Um, we've seen growth on that of up to, um, it was just over 142%. And in addition to that, we communicate with our users, our readers, our fans all the time, you know, through Facebook, through Twitter, and through our newsletter, um, which we publish six times <clears throat> a week. It's a daily newsletter. I'm now going to hand over to Trish, who's going to talk to you more about the editorial and the editorial opportunities. <laughs> Hi, 
I'll start with fashion because that's probably really at the heart of what we do at Marie Claire. Our main fashion stories, which are the sort of images that you see here, are all, you know, the, the designer brands. So if you, you know, you work in that area, then that's great. Um, and we, it's shot by some of the world's best photographers in stunning locations. And for any travel PRs here this evening, we're always um, very interested in discussing uh, shooting at your resorts or your uh, places that you represent. So that's, that's an opportunity there. Now, um, moving on to beauty, uh, we devote more pages to beauty than any other glossy, um, and I think that's because our readers are so incredibly passionate about this area as well, and there is so much going on in, in the world of beauty. Uh, we literally have thousands, I would literally say thousands of beauty products come into the office every year, so it's a huge job for our team to kind of really edit those products, and um, you know, they need to be incredibly knowledgeable about these things, and that the PR element of that is so important for them to kind of get the key messages, get the, the, the most valuable thing to know about the product in there because they do not have the time to kind of, with all the niceties and everything around it, you just need to know why this product is amazing, what's behind it, who the experts are, etc. So, so do bear that in mind. Um, I've just kind of picked a few um, examples here about the, uh, how the beauty team have worked with PRs to come up with some really exciting stories that have come to life even beyond the printed page of Marie Claire or even our website. So Jessica Ennis, um, face, she was signed up by Olay last year to be one of their faces. They offered us an exclusive feature with her and we decided to use her for the cover and we were the first magazine to put her on the cover obviously in the Olympic year and it generated huge amounts of press for us and that for us was all about you know, negotiation, negotiating exclusivity you know, we, of course, if we're getting somebody like a celebrity through um, a brand, they they want to achieve something. Um, but also, we have to kind of really protect our editorial integrity as well. And that and that's like a kind of a negotiation that we work on with whichever brand, and it usually works out very well. Right, moving on to features. Um, I think Marie Claire has always been known for its groundbreaking journalism, for which we have won uh, many awards, I'm very proud to say, over the past 25 years. Um, our aim with our features is really to kind of stimulate, inform, challenge, entertain, of course, and get people talking. Finding great case studies is crucial for us because all our, all our features rely on having really interesting people with interesting stories to tell. And the way we do that, way we find those, obviously um, our journalists have to find those, they use social media, we use charities, we use personal contacts, and we use PRs for brands that have a link, say, to the stories. Okay, moving on to digital. Um, it's no surprise to say, especially with the stats that Justine relayed, that the digital world is huge for us and our readers. Um, the most popular strands on the website are probably our news items, our celebrity galleries, and as well as our fashion and beauty buys of the day. We update the, the website seven days a week with a constant stream of fresh content. Um, what's fantastic about, obviously, with the monthly product, the lead times, etc., what's wonderful about having a monthly print product is that, you know, the levels of our journey journalism, the levels of the production, the quality, the photography, we have the time and money and resources to spend producing that amazingly. And then what's so exciting about the website is that we can do up to, feature up to the development, um, up to the minute developments um, and any products or campaigns that have missed uh, being featured in the magazine because of our long lead times. And as a result of working closely with PRs, we've come up with some really fantastic social media campaigns, Twitter campaigns in the last year, using them to gain followers and reach for both of us. So again, it just works for, for both of us very well, um, along, and this often in conjunction with fashion, beauty, and film brands. Right, do's and don'ts um, uh, for PRs. Do, um, as I have said, learn your titles. Um, be able to say why Marie Claire is different to Elle or Glamour. It's really important that you understand what is unique about each brand and familiarise yourself, as I've said countless times this evening, with each feature and pitch for specific pages and, and, and ensure you know who does what on the magazine and target them. I mean, phoning up and saying, can I speak to somebody who deals with um, homes? Hopeless. You know, you're not going to get through to anybody. You need the name of the person. You need to call and ask for that person or you need to email that person directly. Um, think of fun ways to draw, oh no, sorry, missed one, anticipate questions, know your products inside out and try to predict what a journalist might ask you because they are going to ask you questions about your, your product. Um, think of fun ways to draw attention to your brand. We, as I say, we are bombarded with products and press releases. So how can you make yours stand out? 
Include prices and telephone numbers. Please don't make any more work for the journalist. You know, they don't want to have to, they don't have the time to find these things out. Check your launch times. First thing in the morning is brilliant or have an all-day drop-in uh, launch. Uh, and bear in mind as well, that rule doesn't really apply for online teams because they are literally at their desks at 8 o'clock in the morning and they cannot answer the phone or leave the office before midday because they're doing all their, getting all their stories up, they're doing their newsletters, etc. So they have a slightly different scenario going on there. Right, the don'ts. Don't cold call, which I mentioned, or ask for a features list. Don't send too any, many emails because you just stop looking at them. You just, as soon as you see it come in your inbox, you just press delete. Don't send pictures as attachments. Have them in the body of the text, again, because the journalist is not going to spend the time downloading it. Don't send out four lots of press kits. We've got four people in our beauty department. Don't send four because A, it's a waste of your money, and B, it wastes so much packaging and it, we don't need it. Again, target the right person. And don't underestimate the power of cake, <laughs> is all I can say, because there is nothing that gets a magazine team more excited than being sent some cake. Hi, uh, my name is Dennis Kondopoulos from Nextech. How do you deal with uh, multi-channel marketing, especially online? And is there any form of monitoring, especially on the social media side of things, regarding the feedback you get from readers on products, gifts, discounts, and so on? Yes. So in terms of how we deal with that, we have this, this that bit really is funneled through our marketing, our, our head of marketing and our marketing team. Um, we quite recently launched um, a Facebook fan gate, which was, you know, again, a great way of creating... Um, just increasing our fans, but also creating engagement through products. And what, what we can then do through, um, through that activity is to, is to monitor the, um, the kind of discussion and the response to the product. So we're constantly developing those strands. But for that marketing piece, it very much is funneled through the marketing team. And at the point at which you're having those discussions, all of that will be set up and the feedback would then be established at that point. Hi, I'm Tiwi from My Asian Planet. Hi. Um, well, first of all, thank you for a great presentation. But um, also, if I gather rightly, your core product is the, the physical mag magazine publication. I mean, do you see in the future that one day your online publication could supersede your, you know, the original? I think, I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating um, question because I think we're all asking it, aren't we, of kind of how this media will evolve. I think that there will always be a place for print and I think there will always be a place for um, kind of beautiful, glossy print in the, in the way that, you know, in, in a kind of luxury context. Um, at the same time, however, um, our website has grown. You know, we, we have launched our digital editions. They are growing organically as well. So I think that what we're increasingly finding is that, you know, for brands like ours that, that span such a kind of wide range of content, um, actually, these are all sitting alongside and on top of each other. Um, I think that probably the, the evolution of the digital edition and the print, you know, versus the print or in addition to the print is going to be one of the most exciting things because that is a quite a different experience than print but still gives you that same sense of being involved in a magazine. <laughs> especially for the more junior members of, of PR teams because you know, there is so much to learn. Every brand is different. Every brand has their do's and don'ts and works in different ways. Well, it's very interesting to know how PR works, how they work. They even mention the do's and don'ts. So for people who are trying to contact them, how, how they, they should approach them. I think especially for PR brands, you know, it's a very scary and daunting process contacting such a big publication, but it's great to know that they're very personable and they are open to receiving new offers, but it's about how the best way is to go about it. Now, I think being able to talk to a big audience um, in a very sort of targeted way is, is hugely useful, actually. I think from our point of view, it's helpful because we can um, hopefully help them to be more targeted about their approach. I mean, when you need to reach out to people on a global scale, on a true global scale, there aren't many people that can match PR Newswire in what they're trying to do.